Welcome back everyone to the Core Academy eLearning platform today. My name is AJ Raj, back with a geometry course video for you all. And today's topic is all about parallel and perpendicular lines. Before we jump into today's lesson, please make sure to smash that subscribe button down below, hit that like button on this video, as well as hitting that post notification bell to get notified on any of our channel's latest posts at eCore Academy. So like I said, today's topic is all about parallel and perpendicular lines. And what are what is what makes these so unique and what is why is it so important well parallel and perpendicular lines not only are they essential to know in geometry all throughout the course but they're also very relative to real life there's many real life applications they're all around us and we're not yet noticing what exactly their classification is so the whole theme and whole purpose of today's lesson is trying to discover what makes these lines so unique meaning parallel and perpendicular lines, and how exactly are they represented in real life? Like I said, this is a very um, representative, this is this shows a lot of representation in real life, a lot of real life applications, and you guys can see that through all of our examples today. So we're gonna discover what these lines are, what makes them unique, and how to solve problems in involving them, as well as representing them with real life applications. Let's jump right into it. So our, before we get into parallel and perpendicular lines and classifying what exactly they are, we have to use a certain um, level of measurement, a certain formula, before we can actually identify them in terms of mathematics, in terms of geometry, and in terms of equations. So what we have here is called slope. And slope is actually a form of measurement calculated on a coordinate grid. And if you don't know what a coordinate grid is, that's basically a coordinate part of a coordinate plane. It's the y-axis, which intersects the x-axis. You should have already learned that in, ge um, in algebra and pre-algebra. But if not, I will draw it for you right now. But we're going to have to figure out what slope is before we actually get into identifying what parallel lines and perpendicular lines are. And I will show you that in um, our later slides. So what is slope? Slope is the value of the rise over the run on a coordinate plane. So um, First, before we start to get further in detail with um, slope, we're going to see what exactly a coordinate plane uh, looks like. So I'm sure you've also seen a coordinate grid. It's basically um, a coordinate plane. It's basically two axes or two lines that intersect each other. And basically what happens is they form a little grid. So they form these grids, basically. And that's what a coordinate plane looks like. And I, I recommend that if you don't understand what it looks like, I recommend that you search up some pictures of this um, because it's a very basic concept what the coordinate plane is. And a lot of concepts revolve around it. So if you're given a coordinate plane that looks pretty much like this, it's two lines intersecting each other at a 90 degree angle and they form grids. Um, slope is used to calculate a certain form of rise over run on this coordinate plane. So if you were given a coordinate grid, which is a part of a coordinate plane that looked like this, that looks somewhat like this, it's basically a one quadrant here, this quadrant given here. And if you're given, you know, these tick marks representing numbers, and basically what you're asked to do is you're asked to find a line, uh, find the slope of any line that's on that um, coordinate um, grid. What you're going to do is you're going to calculate the amount of units that a line, a point on a line. So what, first, before you do that, sorry, you're going to find two points on the line. You're going to mark off these two points. And what you're going to do is you're going to find those coordinates. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to count how, how far the actual, um, how far these points are in um, length across. So that's your X axis here and your Y axis. So you're going to see how far they are in X units. So you're going to count across and then you're going to count upwards. And basically what happens is with the whole full calculation, you're going to figure out your Y over X, which is your slope over, uh, which is a rise over run, which is equivalent to your slope. And I will go in further detail about this. I'm just going to give you um, just a plain uh, representation of slope in an equation. So don't you know, don't worry if you don't know what slope is. Um, I will recap on that in further lessons and di digest and so that you, it's easier for you to digest entirely. So what we're really worried about today is how to see how exactly we can identify slope in an equation. So slope comes in the most common equation called the y equals mx plus b, which is basically the slope intercept form. You don't necessarily have to know what that is, but you are expected to know what it is coming into this lesson. 
And I will, of course, go into um, further detail with what all of these items are. But all you need to know is this equation in this form, y equals mx plus b. b is a constant term, meaning that it's just a, a, a value, a number, and m is your slope. Like I say here, um, the slope is the value of m in this equation. And this is the equation that we're worried about to identify parallel and perpendicular lines. That's all you need to know. You only need to know that the m in this whole equation, y equals mx plus b, is the slope. That's all you need to know. And you can copy down this equation. I'll write it down here if I marked it up too much. y equals mx plus b. And m is the slope. And you don't even know need to know um, if the slope is a rise over run. I will go into that in further detail. And finally, um, I'm going to give you an example of this equation, y equals mx plus b. In the equation y equals mx plus b, the value y and the value x are both going to remain as variables, but the values of m and values of b are always going to be interchangeable, meaning depending on the very line that you're given, the equation will consort to that norm. So um, m and b are going to be constants. They're going to be digits, numbers, any type of number that you want. And say, for example, uh, we have this uh, equation right here, y equals 4x plus 3. It's very clear that 4 is the um, value of m in this equation here because it, it follows this equation, y equals mx plus b. And since it's the value of m, the slope is equivalent to 4. And the slope is always equal to a number, a singular number. All right, so now that we know what slope is, we can actually go and digest what parallel and perpendicular lines are. So let's start off with parallel lines. What are parallel lines and what make two lines parallel? Well, parallel lines are coplanar lines that never exist. Uh, sorry, coplanar, parallel lines are coplanar lines that never intersect. Um, and basically what coplanar means is if you haven't referred to my previous video all about um, geometric definitions and terms, it's basically the first, essentially the first video in our ge geometry course. Please refer to that. Um, it has all of these definitions, such as coplanar in, uh, included in slides, and I go through them with included examples. But if you don't know what coplanar is, it's basically lines that exist on the same plane. And a plane is any two-dimensional outlook. And please refer to that previous video to, uh, to see exactly what a plane is and what coplanar means. So parallel lines are coplanar lines, like I said here, lines that exist on the same plane. So basically they exist on the same 2D figure or basically exist on the same exact level, um, on a level. And in this case, it's paper. They both exist on the same exact sheet of paper and they never intersect. So it's two lines, essentially two lines. I mean, you can think of it on a coordinate plane or you can just think of it on a blank sheet of paper. Two lines like this, I'm going to show you on like a blank chalkboard here. Um, two lines, one here, one here. And what happens is all throughout on any end, and as, as you know, lines are infinitely long. So they extend out in infinite um, for an infinite amount of time and for an infinite measure. So that means that we can never calculate their entire length. But what we do know is parallel lines, they will never intersect. So they will always inter um, they will always extend out in both of their directions without overlapping each other. So this is the only type of line that will never intersect. And on a coordinate plane, these two lines will have the same exact slope. And that's why I had to bring in slope into this lesson. So if we had um, one equation that had the equation of y equals 4x, and another equation with y equals 4x plus 3, since they both have the same m value, or the same slope, they are parallel. So basically their slope in the equation y equals mx plus b, I'm going to write that down again, y equals mx plus b. If they both have the same m value, that means they are both parallel and they will never ever intersect. So let's move on to some real life applications. Now I know the whole purpose of um, geometry has really been to shine the light on real realistic concepts, on physical properties, and try to correlate relationships with between them. So we're gonna try and give some real life representation for parallel lines. So here are some real life applications. Um, one of the most popular and well-known real life examples for parallel lines would be railroad tracks. So the simple railroad tracks, uh, I'm gonna draw them out here. So you know, what whatever a train goes on, 
if you see what a train goes on, what's right beneath that train is a bunch of tracks. And those tracks kind of look like two parallel lines. And they extend out like this, essentially. And they have these little lines coming across them. I want you to ignore these lines that I'm drawing in. I'm just trying to make the picture of the railroad line. So I'm going to say railroad here. And essentially what happens is these two lines here, this, this one, I'm going to mark them with X and this one, these two lines will extend out forever without intersecting, meaning that they have the same exact slope if you're calculating it on a coordinate plane. But this is what, um, this is one real life application for parallel lines. And another application would be, um, could be the size of a doorway. So if you see what a doorway looks like, it's not the actual door included, but what a doorway looks like. Say, for example, you're entering a room and it looks like this. This side here and this side here are said to be parallel because they extend for a certain given distance, but they never intersect. And therefore, they are both parallel lines. And you can basically see that, you know, they, they're almost identical, but one is just shifted to the side more. That's basically what a parallel line is. All right, and let's move on to some problems for parallel lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what parallel, uh, par what parallel and perpendicular lines are, some examples of them in real life, and some real, um, some um, different kinds of problems. And the, the, I'll be giving you three different types of problems for each type of line. And for parallel lines, we're going to first come across the problem in which um, consults graphing. It, it revolves around graphing. So a gra uh, parallel line graphing problem. So um, one type of problem is about, uh, I'm going to give you an example of a graphing problem, which is basically graphing a line parallel to a given line. So that's a graphing problem for parallel lines. So if you were to graph a line to a parallel line, you're basically given a line already, say for example like this, this line right here. I'm going to name that line A, and they're asking you to generically draw a parallel line to line A. So I'm just going to estimate, this is some kind of eyeballing question, meaning that you're just going to have to estimate with what you think it is. So right here, I'm just going to draw another line here, my best estimate of a parallel line, and that I'm going to name that line B. And since I, since by uh, my vision, my plain vision and my common sense, I can tell that they are most likely parallel. So I'm going to check that off. For our next problem, we have theory problems. So theory problems doesn't necessarily have to do with calculation or graphing form. It just has to do with overall concept of parallel lines. And these are the basics. So I'm going to throw a question at you for a theory of parallel lines. And it's, are parallel lines of the same exact length? Well, this isn't necessarily just specific to parallel lines. It has to do with lines in general. Now, we know that lines in general, they extend for infinite for an infinite amount and infinitely in both directions. And since they extend for an infinite amount and for an infinite and in, in, in for infinite op opposite directions, that means they have infinite lengths. So if they both have infinite lengths, that means they cannot be calculated. And that means that all of them must have the same length. So whether parallel, perpendicular, or any two lines given on a graph or given in real life, they are, tech, by tech, in technical terms and by the laws of geometry, they are all of the same length. So I'm just going to write here, answer is all lines are the same length. And that's very important to know. I would just, su just suggest that you write that down. And finally, we're going to go through a problem which involves equation. And this is a calculation problem, your typical math problem. And it's, I know it looks wordy, but let's break it down. It's actually very, very simple, like I said before. And we have to refer to the fact that parallel lines have the same exact slope. So if a line has an equation of y equals 4 thirds x plus 2, which is in the form of y equals mx plus b, I'm going to write that right here, y equals mx plus b. Um, if a line has an equation of y equals 4 thirds x plus 2, name a line that is parallel to this. So you're going to name a line that's parallel to the equation given right here. And what we're going to do first is, uh, what we're going to do first and what we're only going to do is look at the m value. Now we know that the m value is what's multiplied by x. And we see here that 4 thirds is the m value. So I'm going to write that out. Well, m equals 4 thirds. Now we know that parallel lines both have the same exact slope. 
So what in essence, all we need to do is create an equation with y equals mx plus b that has a slope of four thirds. So all that really is, is we're gonna make up any equation with y equals four thirds x. And you can make up uh, anything on the top of your head. So I'm gonna say y equals four thirds x plus five. You don't even need to have a five here. You can have plus zero, you know, you can have plus zero, plus two, and infinite, any, any number, any value that can go here. And that would not change the fact that these two lines are in fact parallel. All right, let's move on to perpendicular lines. So what are perpendicular lines? Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect or meet at right angles. So notice how we said that per parallel lines are the only type of lines that never intersect for the entire length of a line. Well, perpendicular lines do in fact intersect and their visual representation shows that two lines intersect at right angles. And basically um, you should already know this, um, a right angle is an angle, which I ex I um, have already explained what an angle was in my previous video about geometric terms and definitions. But an angle is basically a figure um, developed between two lines that intersect. So when two lines cross over each other, there's a little arc formed in between them. And this specific type of angle is called a right angle, and a right angle measures 90 degrees. And since they both, uh, so when they intersect, they measure 90 degrees. And that's what perpendicular lines do. So I'm going to draw this right here. So perpendicular lines intersect at 90 degrees. We're going to see these this line right here, one line right here, and then another line right here. And basically what happens is at any point of intersection, at any side of intersection, they're always going to be 90 degree angles. And a 90 degree angle is formed by a square that looks like this. That's what shows a 90 degree angle. And this is a 90 degree angle. And I'm just going to indicate that with this right here. So 90 degrees. All right, so perpendicular lines, they only intersect at right angles. And what's so special about their slope? Well, their slopes have a product of negative one. Remember how we said the slope rule for parallel lines was that parallel lines always have equivalent slopes. They have congruent slopes, which are basically the same exact slope. And what per perpendicular lines have is their slopes have a product of negative one. So basically what you're doing is you're taking the equation, deriving the equation y equals mx plus b. It's the same equation for every single line. And all you're doing is you're taking the m value of one. Uh, I'm gonna write two y equals mx plus b equations here. So you're taking the, this is gonna be equation one, and this is going to be equation two. And you're taking the two values of the slopes. And when you multiply m times m, m1, I'm going to say here m1 for equation 1, and m2 for equation 2. And when you multiply m1, multi m1, this is a multiplication sign, m1 times m2, that should equal negative 1. And that's what proves a, two lines to be perpendicular. Sorry, that was messy. Equals a negative 1. All right. Let's look at some real-life examples before we start getting into these um, different types of problems, theory, graphing, and equations. So let's look at some real-life applications. So a common example for perpendicular lines in reality would be a wall in a house making contact with the floor. So if you see any wall in a house, if you look, in, if you're looking around in the room that you're currently in, and you see a wall perched up right next to you, and then you see the floor right here, right? You can take any side of this um, wall that's intersecting the floor, and if you measure this degree angle, it's always going to be 90 degrees. So that makes the floor and one side of a wall or any part of a wall um, perpendicular to each other. And another example would be um, the intersection of a building to the ground. So if you're seeing any building, even your house itself, and you're looking outside and you're looking at uh, the base of it, say for example, that this is a giant building. I'm gonna draw a little uh, hut on it, I mean triangle on it to make it look almost like a house too. And um, basically what's happening is if you look at the ground, if it's a straight, if it's straight ground underneath a building, then that building has to be perpendicular to the house or uh, the building, because, um, in order for the building to, or house to be standing up straight, it must be perpendicular to the ground, which forms a 90 degree angle, which is formed by that little square that I've indicated here as it being equivalent to 90 degrees. And the way that you can do that is you can always measure in real life with a protractor. It's an item that looks like kind of like this. 
and I will show you how to do that in later videos. I'll make an entire lesson on how to use a protractor. It's basically um, what's used to measure angles and degrees and as little marks that you place over an angle. And I'll show you what that looks like in later videos. And finally, let's look at some like uh, um, some simple perpendicular line problems to get you guys ready and to give you a little glimpse at what they'll look like in geometry. So first type of problem is the graphing problem for perpendicular lines. And the problem that we're given is simply to graph a line perpendicular to a, any given line. So if I give you a line like this, that's a straight line that goes up vertically up and down like this, and I'm going to name that line line A, you have to graph a perpendicular line to line A. So just off a of visual representation, I'm going to assume that the perpendicular line must be line B, which is a line that intersects it at, um, straight through the middle of the line, and it go, it's, going, it's going in the complete opposite direction. And A and I'm going to name this line B. So line B is actually perpendicular to line A because, like I said, it must develop a 90 degree angle and it just, in fact, does at its intersection. For the next type of problem, we have a theory problem as I'm going to throw another theory at you just based off of the uh, general concepts and the essence of perpendicular lines. And the problem that I'm throwing at you is do perpendicular lines technically produce four right angles? Remember how I said... Um, when two perpendicular lines intersect, they must have a 90 degree angle intersection. Well, that's one of the angles. So if you see a perpendicular line set, like I'm going to indicate here, if you see two, perp um, two perpendicular lines like this, you see that they form four different angles right here. I'm going to indicate that with one giant square. Now, if one side is equivalent to 90 degrees, that means all of the angles must produce four right angles. So this is true. And that is in fact true because when two lines intersect, when any two lines intersect, doesn't matter if they're perpendicular or of any type of intersecting lines when they overlap each other, the full degree of rotation around them must be equivalent to 360 degrees. And I will also explain that later on, but when two lines intersect, the sum of all of their angles that are formed must equal 360 degrees. And since one angle equals 90 degrees, the other three must also equal 90 degrees since perpendicular lines for, form four uh, right angles, which are all four equivalent angles. And finally, we have our equational form of um, perpendicular lines. And the problem that I'm throwing at you is what is an equation of a line perpendicular to the line y equals 7x? So remember how we said the um, multiple when both of the slopes of two lines are multiplied in their equational form y equals mx plus b, when they're both multiplied, they must equal negative one. So that's m1, m1 multiplied by m2, ignore that, m2, they must equal negative one. Now, there's another way to format that. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to find the equation, um, y equals 7x, and you're trying to form some, si some type of equation that's perpendicular to the line 7x. Now, in order to figure out what the, what, um, the slope of any perpendicular line to y equals 7x is, you actually have to use the, um, the opposite reciprocal format. So what the opposite reciprocal really does is, say for example, we have the value a, right? You have the value a over b, which in this case is 7 over 1 for 7 which equals 7 in this case for the slope of y equals 7x. Now, what you're going to do for a opposite reciprocal is the reciprocal of any number is when you flip-flop the numerator over the denominator, which is basically the number on the top by the number over on the bottom. So you're going to flip 7 over 1 to 1 over 7, like this, 1 over 7. And then what you're going to do is you're going to multiply this value by negative 1 and it's gonna equal negative one over seven. So that's the slope of our perpendicular line. And I'm just gonna make the equation y equals one seventh x, which is indeed perpendicular to y equals seven x. And basically, like I said, the reciprocal, I'm gonna write that here, reciprocal in this open space, reciprocal. It's when you flip flop the denominator numerator, numerator. So if you're given a value a over b, it's gonna equal b over a. And then for opposite, you're just going to multiply b over a 
times negative 1 to get negative b over a. All right, guys, so that's it for today on parallel and perpendicular lines. Hope you guys really um, got something out of this um, lesson and hope you guys understood. If you really need to, please make sure to refer back, pause the video at certain points in this um, lesson if you need to copy down some notes or you just need to absorb some extra information. So this has been Ecore Academy eLearning Platform. Please make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified on any of our channel's latest posts before you leave. And also visit our website link at ecoreacademy.org. This uh, website actually gives you full unlocked access to what Ecore Academy provides to you, our learners. And it's not just videos that's provided there. It's also integrated quizzes that go along with each and every video, worksheets, note sheets, you name it. We have everything there for you for a full curated um, learning process. And of course, email at us email us at gmail at ecoreacademy at gmail.com if you have any questions on any of our lessons, any suggestions, or if you just want to reach out to us. And please, please, please check out all of our socials at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you already have your existing accounts there, please help us and help our community by sharing all these videos to those who might find it useful or those who you may know. So um, once again, guys, thank you for watching. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys in the next one. It's been AJ, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.